My After Eleven guest now is Sandra Bellamy, who describes herself as an asexual younger cougar. She enjoys passionate kissing, but is repulsed by sex and nudity. She doesn't want to get married, live with a man or have children, and she wouldn't sleep in the same bed as a man. Sounds complicated. Well, she joins me on the programme right now. Sandra, good evening. Thank you very much indeed for joining me on the show tonight. Hello, Graham. Let's start with a little bit about yourself. So uh, where were you brought up and what's your current status? Oh, right. Um, Well, I was born up north, actually, but I've lived in Devon pretty much all my life. Since one and a half years old, I now live in Exeter. I live about five minutes walk from the quayside. And I live with my two girl guinea pigs. So, yeah, they're all the children I've ever wanted. So they're really cute. What was childhood like for you? Um, my, ow, actually, my childhood wasn't that great. So, yeah, I didn't really like my childhood that much. But I live like a teenager now. So, like, when I was younger, I was kind of old before my time. Right. Now I'm older in birth certificate age, I'm younger. So, yeah, I live like a teenager now. So, but, yeah, when I was um, younger, I did have a bad incident happen when I was 15 years old. So, um, that was quite difficult for me. Right. Um... Yeah, that was like um, some guy tried to, um, you know, try it on sexually with me right. um, and have sex with me okay. when I didn't want it and I stopped him. So, yeah, that was quite tough for me. But um, there's a, a myth about um, asexuals because I'm a, a romantic asexual. There's a myth about asexuals that, um, you know, that we might have had sexual abuse in the past and that's what makes us asexual but it's not true because I had my sexual abuse when I was 15 years old and I had all my sexual relationships after that. So I was in sexual relationships from that time all the way through to 2011. Now let's try and simplify this if we can because I want to make it uh, easy for my listeners to actually follow what we're talking about here tonight. You describe yourself as an asexual cougar. So explain what that means. All right, okay. So I get predominantly attracted to younger guys, foreign as it happens, and I live in the UK, and predominantly from the ages of 21 to 27. But because I'm asexual and I don't experience sexual attraction, I don't want sex with those guys... Um, in, ca- in my case, I'm a heteromantic, um, hyperromantic asexual. Uh, oh, well, hang on. You're <laughs> using lots of words here. So just explain what heteromantic means. Heteromantic. Hetero means I'm attracted to the opposite sex, so just guys. Mm-hmm. And romantic means I'm romantically attracted to them. So I love kissing. I love holding hands, cuddling, all that type of thing. But I don't like, want or need sex and never have the urge to have it with them. Right. So you don't want marriage, you don't want kids? No. And cougar as well? Yeah, so cougar, yeah. So um, obviously people know more about sexual cougars and the fact they, you know, they like sex with younger guys in their 20s. I don't want the sex. Mm. I define myself as an asexual cougar, so I lack sexual attraction. Okay, so you're looking for a guy 20 plus, yeah? Yeah. Okay, how old are you? I don't usually talk about my birth certificate age um, because I don't like to because, you know, it's really not who I am. I, I like, my, I had a 21st mindset birthday in Disneyland Paris this year. Right. So that's how I like to, I mean, I, I do tell people who want to date me, you know, because I'm on asexual dating sites. I do tell people who, who want to date me my age, but I don't usually reveal it unless you really want me to, Graham. I'd like to know your age. Okay. Um, um. Oh, I hate saying it. I really hate saying it because I, it's not who I am. I just, oh, I really hate it. But I'm 4 zero. No, I can't even say it. <laughs> do you have a problem with that then, being 4 zero? Yes, I do. Because Why? It's, because it's not who I am. Because if you knew me, um, I literally live like a teenager. Like, I've got an Iron Man alarm clock in my bedroom. I've got coloured boxes all around my room. I've got sparkly things. I collect, like, Eeyore. I'm a Disney girl. And I literally, um, you know, people judge me when if I say that, I'm that, and it's not who I am. When I was younger, like I said, I was old before my time, mm. and I didn't have a great childhood. I, I suffered with depression till 2012, and then literally in 2012, I actually changed my life around. So it's kind of like a sub-story to this. So, yeah, um, I turned my life around, um, and then I developed this mindset of having a younger, younger life. So my mindset is, at the moment, 21 years old, and I can do anything a 21-year-old does. 
So I like going out clubbing, for example. I haven't been for a while because my friends are too old for it. Um, I like going to theme parks. Uh, I went to Disneyland this year. I like to go to aquarium zoos. I like to do all young stuff, like I uh, listen to dance music for hours in the morning like i have much more in common with guys for example that are in their 20s okay well let's go back to what we were talking about a few moments ago where you would like to um, uh, date or be with a younger guy potentially yeah so what's the difference between that then and celibacy because you you do you were quite specific that you didn't want sex Oh, yeah. So I have had sex in the past. So my, my, you know, I've had um, sex with my partners in the past. They were all heterosexuals. But um, celibacy is when someone's abstaining from sex. Whereas if you're asexual, it's, it's a sexual orientation in its own right mm. that's barely unheard of. Um, you know, it's, it's unheard of and it's not really understood very now, well. I, I've also heard that you're... Uh, uh, your asexuality is a spectrum. So can you just tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, going back to celibacy, that's a choice, whereas asexuality isn't. And uh, with asexuality, yeah, it's a spectrum. So basically, um, that you can get different types of asexuals. You can get anyone's ranging from sort of the very, 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 very asexual. We're all asexual, but there's ones that are extreme asexuals, as in they are aromantic asexuals who don't experience romantic or sexual attraction and then it goes through to sort of the middle part of the spectrum such as myself who's a heteromantic so I'm attracted to guys romantically want the kissing and cuddling but no sex and then you've got it goes in all the way through to great asexuals who experience sexual attraction under little or rare circumstances or they experience sexual attraction but not enough to want to act on it but you did Always say a few moments sexual. ago you did say a few moments ago that you had had heterosexual relationships for yeah. for with five guys for half of your life so i've been in sexual relationships all my life from the age of 15 to 34 actually um so basically um yeah i was in a long-term relationship with a guy for nearly seven years at one point but we hardly ever had sex I mean, probably was a handful of times. He went off with someone else. He had an affair. That's the problem if you end up with a heterosexual, likely is a lot of them will go off because they need the sex. And then my long-term ex, who was eight and a half years, he was actually good at sex. It's most gentlest and kindest and very, very good. Uh, Do you know what I mean? How difficult was it for you when your partner wanted sex? And we're obviously talking about penetration here. Yeah. um, So it's kind of... um, Right, I mean... Because he used to do loads of foreplay, I'm getting really intimate here, then it made it like a lot more um, easier to have sex because I found sex quite painful, so that was quite good. So I prefer just that. But it wasn't so bad because he was doing that. And, um, you know, but it was like, uh, in terms of my mind, I didn't want to do it. I sort of used to avoid it and try and put it off. So I'd rather do the washing up. I absolutely hate the washing up. But if he tried to, like you know, touch my breasts and try and instigate sex, I would rather do the washing up. So what would you say then to people who might perhaps say that you just weren't good at sex? What, me wasn't good at sex? Oh. Or you just didn't have any good sex? No, but that's what I said. My ex was good at sex. That's what people say. People say, oh, you're asexual because you didn't have good sex. He was very good at sex. We did loads of different positions, um, you know, Oral sex, both of us tried it. Um, you know, I didn't like it. I had to spit the stuff out. I mean, but um, I tried it, and you know, and and I actually, I can't believe it, Graham. I tell you a story now. I got this um, little pocketbook of Karma Sutra positions, not even thinking he was going to use it on me because I was so innocent. This is how an asexual mind is different to a heterosexual mind. So I bought him the book because. He liked doing that type of thing. I didn't think that he was going to use it on me because I was his partner. And then he was, like, trying all these different sexual positions out with me. And I'm like, I would have preferred just to do the straight one, you know, where I'm doing it full frontal because I like the feeling of security with his arms around my back. I was more interested in the kissing, the security, the arms around the back, not the actual intercourse. I mean, I can come, um, but, you know, it's, it's not pleasurable for me. It's like, what's the big deal? I don't get it. It's- OK, so how did you discover that you were asexual? So um, in 2014, so I split up with my ex uh, from eight and a half years in 2011, and then I dated heterosexual guys, but I I nearly wet myself um, when I was around them because I couldn't stand the sexual energy that came off them, the expectation that after the date I would have sex. And so I went to see a counsellor because I was like, I just, 
I just can't do this anymore. I want a relationship. I want a romantic relationship and kissing and cuddling, but I don't want the sex. And I said, there must be some other people like me. And she turned around and said to me, you have to have sex if you want to keep a good guy. And I was just absolutely appalled, you know. I'd gone there to help because I wanted to feel loved for my personality. I wanted to, to be able to be helped to get a relationship without sex and for a guy just to love me for my personality, for my intelligence, creativity and everything else and not the sex. And, and how did you sex. feel? Would, were you feeling relieved when you knew that uh, you, this is the way that you were and you didn't have to have sex anymore? So I didn't find it out from her. I went home and Googled, I love sex, uh, sorry, I love kissing, but not sex, not sex. And then it came up with asexuality. And then I found asexuality.org, which is the biggest online community for asexuals. I began to read their forum threads and realised this is me. And it was like such a relief. I'm like, my God, there's all these people that I never knew anything about. And for years of my life, I thought I was the only one. And it was absolutely incredible experience, and this is why I call myself an ambassador for asexuality now and an asexual entrepreneur, because I want to help other people find out if they're asexual or not. So, you know, I, I think it's really bad that kids in school aren't taught about asexuality. You know, you think you have to be in sexual relationships to be loved, you know. I, you know, I don't associate sex with love, but that's traditionally how society sees it, that in order to have a loving, happy, healthy relationship, you have to have sex, but that's not true. All right, Sandra, let's just catch our breath for a second if we can. Let's break here for some music. But afterwards, I'd like to talk about your ideal man and what you want from him. We'll talk more about that in a few moments' time on Late Night Graham Torrington. So here until 1 o'clock tonight, it's Late Night Graham Torrington talking to writer Sandra Bellamy about finding out that three years ago that uh, she was on the asexual spectrum. So uh, you've obviously got friends who are in uh, loving relationships uh, and also sexual relationships. Um, how do you feel about the sort of life they lead? OK, so I actually have highly sexual friends and I have female friends who really need sex in a relationship. You know, they're, they're, they're very got a huge appetite. So I have no problem with having sexual friends. I can make sexual jokes as well because it doesn't affect me all my life because I'm not involved in that. So I have no problem with people who have sex, people who enjoy sex. It's fine by me, just that I don't personally want a relationship for me with sex in it. OK, well, although you have you are relieved that you don't have to have sex, you'd like a romantic relationship with yeah. a man. And Is that's that... really tough to find because most... Um, I, I get attracted to predominantly foreign guys. I'm hardly ever attracted to British, not enough to want to kiss them. So trying to find a suitable uh, romantic foreign guy life partner, as it were, in the UK, um, a heteromantic like myself, is pretty impossible. OK, you know? well, this isn't the only uh, thing that you have in your head here, that they, the attributes they need to have, because you are very specific, aren't you? Yeah, like Indian, specifically. Right, and there's, there's an age Yeah, 21 range? to 27, ideally. I mean, I would, you know, if the guy was really young for his age and looked young, then... It might be a bit different. OK, they also need to be romantic, intelligent, yeah. creative, yeah. spiritual, sensual and emotional. Yeah. And this is the one that kind of made my eyes open. They also must star themselves on John Travolta in Greece. Danny, oh, Danny Zucker. In the newspaper, right, the journalist did sort of go out, blow out of proportion a little bit. So what I said in that interview from my Daily Mirror interview was that I like, I have experienced close attraction... And I get attracted to the street dance look. So, for example, John Travolta, who has a leather jacket and like white or black t-shirt with um, trousers on, that's the look I like. Like the and like the you know the clean-shaven biker look, and also street dance movies as well. I did tell her I like the guys out of street dance movies who wear street dance clothes. But he doesn't have to look like that. But he should have clothes that I like the look of. I also like a guy in a suit as well. Right. So yeah. Ideally. Now, I, I would have thought that a person with all that criteria and who doesn't want to have sex is going to be hugely difficult to find. Yeah. We're, we're 1% of the population, which means one in every recorded 1% of the population. There's probably a lot more of us in quiet, but, um, which means one in every 100 people are asexual, but most people don't come out about it. Most people are quiet and live in secret. So unless I can find um, a heterosexual guy who doesn't, you know, who will live without sex because I'm monogamous. I'm not into a poly relationship, so I won't facilitate that. If a guy's with me, he's with me because he loves me for me and, you know, there's no sex in it. So unless I find a heterosexual guy like that, which I haven't done so far in my life in previous relationships, 
um, you know, because in the end they usually always want it, then, you know, I can only really be with an asexual guy and it's easier for me with an asexual guy because obviously I haven't got the worry about anything happening that shouldn't happen. You know, they're trying to have sex because the thing is when you're with a heterosexual guy, they, you know, they kind of keep pushing you for it and kind of, you know, they think you're starving them of sex sometimes and they think if you... I love the kissing, so really my ideal guy would be a uh, romantic asexual guy that I could kiss passionately, which is quite unusual for an asexual. I like to really get in there and kiss passionately, uh, but with my clothes on, you know, but no sex. And so where asexual. have you been looking then for this guy? So I'm on asexual dating sites. So there's a couple, asexualytic.com, acebook.net. Um, I'm also in Facebook groups. There's quite a lot of asexual dating groups on Facebook. I've got, I run my own dating group uh, for asexuals on Facebook. Um, now, when you initially meet someone who potentially is going to fit all this criteria here yeah uh do you tell them about all the things that you are looking for and how you feel about stuff and what you, they're expected to part there to play in this relationship so um i haven't met any asexual people in person uh, i've only met them online the ones i'm attracted to the foreign guys um, the, I've met asexual British guys because I hold asexual meetups in my city in Exeter, but I'm not attracted to them. So that's the problem. I haven't, oh, there's one guy a very, very long time ago, asexual guy that he wanted, for him, that he wanted marriage and kids. So we weren't suitable. And I met up with one other foreign, um, no, British guy asexual, but you know, I wasn't really that attracted to him because he's British. So yeah, I haven't really met any in person foreign asexual romantic guys in the UK. It's Are you hoping hard. to meet him? Sorry? Are you hoping to meet him? I'm hoping to meet him, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Does I'm it really bother hoping. does it bother you that you'll never have children because you know, you need to have sex, have children? Oh, I don't want children. I've never wanted children since I've been fifteen years old. So I knew from fifteen years of age I've never wanted kids in my life. Right. I'm pregnancy repulsed actually and in my day job as I like to call it, I work in a retail store. I work on furniture department, but round the corner from it, um, there's uh, a kids department, which is nursery department, and I have to see pregnant women all the time, and it took me about two and a half years to stop feeling sick every time I saw a pregnant woman. I just don't like pregnancy at all, and I have never wanted... I, I don't ever have the urge to have kids, ever. I get on well with kids, but they're like little beans in their own right, because I am like live like a teenager. We talk about movies and stuff, mm. like Toy Story and things like that. And Iron Man movies, if so, they're a bit older. So, hang on, just to get this clear in my head. Pregnant women repulse you? The pregnancy thing, the, you know, obviously I'm not saying that women who are pregnant are repulsive. I'm saying the look of the re- pregnancy bit repulses me, yeah. Just... Now, you've written a book about this, haven't you? And uh, there's an interesting title. I'll let you give me the title, because it's quite a long title, isn't it? Oh, right, OK. Well, the, the book is about asexuals across the spectrum, and it's about love, life and sex. So, the, so basically, the book is called Asexual Perspectives, 47 Asexual Stories, Love, Life and Sex, A Celebration of Asexual Diversity. Now, that rolls off the tongue, doesn't it, that title? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it, it's really important, though, because I've interviewed 46 asexuals around the globe from sort of all different ethnicities, backgrounds, um, uh, so that you can get a broad range of all the different asexuals across the spectrum. You know, like, um, there's something like a homoromantic is like a gay asexual, a biromantic is someone who's like a bisexual but just experiences romantic attraction. Mm. And then you've got a panromantic that's like pansexual but they don't experience sexual attraction, they experience romantic attraction. So there's all different types of um, variations in the spectrum and also different variations of the orientation. Right. And I've interviewed them about love, life and sex because there's this myth and stereotype that asexuals can't or don't or won't have had sex in their life. And some of us have done for whatever reason it was in, in our past. Usually some asexuals will have sex to please their partner. Um, I'm a re- sex-repulsed asexual these days, but even though I, you know I've had it in the past, but there's some asexuals that are not sex-repulsed because sexual behaviour is not the same as sexual attraction, and this is what people confuse. So, for example, um, I lack sexual attraction, so I, I don't ever feel the need, want, or urge to have sex with any guy. I never look at a guy and think, I want sex with you, not even someone I love. But, for example, even with me, I love the passionate, intimate kissing. I experience high levels of arousal, which people don't understand that some asexuals can do. And I love the passionate, intimate kissing, and I love the sort of dopamine hit from the arousal I get from the, the French kissing, if you like. And that's sort of sexual behaviour, 
but it's not sexual attraction, so I'm still an asexual because I'm not sexually attracted to the guy. Has it actually helped you by doing all these interviews? Has it made you understand more? Yeah, I mean, I learned so much from my own book. I mean, there's even an asexual in there that's with a bisexual without sex, and it's, they just said that, you know, there's no, there was no difficulty with that. They accept it straight away. So it, my own book, in my own book, I say I will, will not ever be with a heterosexual again, hmm. but in my own book gives me hope that you know that I that people can uh, like some asexuals can have a relationship without sex even with a heterosexual mm. or a sexual person. Well, so. you know, Sandra, I've talked about love and relationships on the radio for for many many years. Yeah, I loved your late night love. I used to listen to you all the time. And the, one of the first things I learned about all of this was that you can never really can't compartmentalise anyone because there is a huge spectrum, yeah. isn't there? And lots of people will never fully understand. Yeah. And I'm sure there's a lot of people listening to the programme right now who yeah. just don't understand what you're talking about. No. Uh, and they never will. But yeah. it's really interesting to talk to you. I'm not saying I don't understand. I, I yeah. get where you're coming from. Thank but you. the, the thing is, is... Uh, at least you've identified what you are and you know what you're going for. And it sounds to me that any potential partner that's going to come along yeah. will fully understand where yeah. you're coming from because you'll be right on the button there with them as well, won't you? I will. I tell any guy I meet, even if, you know, because a lot of them aren't going to be asexual, really, are they? It's very hard to come by. A lot of guys I meet, I tell within the first five minutes I'm asexual. I get it in there straight away. And also, because I'm an ambassador for asexuality and I'm an asexual entrepreneur, I actually go around to business shows promoting asexuality i've put made asexuality part of my business so i go under asexualize i've got a website called asexualize.com so my book asexual perspectives by the way is on amazon in kindle and paperback i was going to ask you that because yeah. you've sold everything else you might as well sell that as well yeah so asexual <laughs> perspectives 47 asexual stories love life and sex a celebration of asexual survivors. sandra it's been a pleasure to talk to you tonight thank, thank you, you very much indeed for coming onto the program thank you thanks so much Nicole Pullman from BBC Radio After Show Feedback. Thank you again for a fabulous interview. Thought I would pass this on. It was texted to Graham after your interview. GT, your After 11 guest rings so true with me. I've been divorced for three years now and part of the issue is my lack of interest in sex. I'm wondering if I am asexual too. I crave company and love but the thought of sex is repulsive. Thanks for listening. Disclaimer, copyright of this audio belongs to BBC and is being used for educational purposes only. Subscribe now for more asexual education, entertainment, chat show and vlog. See you soon.